Our earth is a wonderful place. We are surrounded by Mother Nature, which provides us with many resources. An idyllic system where animals, plants and humans can live together. However, the system gets into imbalance. With our carbon emissions, pollution and plastic consumption, we are destroying the environment. In the last century, environmental pollution has grown exponentially and still continues to increase. How long can the earth stand this until it breaks? And who should stop this development? The answer is we. It's our duty to save the environment for the sake of all. But how can we do this? Hence the question, is it possible for one dish to save the world? No. One dish is not able to. But when several hundreds, thousands or millions of people cook it, it can save the world. But how is this possible? Let's take a look on our food. Around 25% of global greenhouse gas emissions are produced by what we eat. That's twice as much as all the vehicles in the world, including cars, ships and airplanes. And we can influence this with sustainable cooking. What's that you're asking? Well, sustainable cooking means to cook dishes that do not harm the environment and ensure that our earth recovers. It is based on six simple principles. First, less meat. Perhaps you have already seen it coming. But the production of meat harms the environment enormously. Animals produce gases which are 25 times more harmful than CO2 emissions. In total, they are responsible for 14% of greenhouse emissions. That means they produce as many emissions as all the traffic in the world. But that doesn't mean you have to give up meat completely. No, you can simply eat less or other meat. If you take everything in consideration that it takes to produce a steak, you come up to 330 grams carbon. That is the same as driving 3 miles in a car. In comparison, chicken has only 52 grams of carbon, so only one sixth. The recommendation for a greener world says to eat a total of 300 grams of meat per week, divided into 200 grams of chicken and 100 grams of beef. What sounds quite good, doesn't it? Second, regionality. To cook sustainable, it is important that the ingredients are also sustainable. If you buy regional ingredients, they do not have long transport routes behind them, which protects the environment. In addition, you discover many new foods that have fallen into oblivion. Now, the same thing applies to the third principle, namely seasonal products. There is no sense in trying to protect the nature by eating a plant-based diet and buying products that are not seasonal because for that the products have to travel hundreds of miles again so that they find a way into your stomach. 4. Less packaging. The production of packaging costs resources and thus harms the environment. But not only that, every year thousands of tons of plastic waste end up in the waters of our world, where they destroy the habitat of animals. So you should buy food that is not packed in plastic. Or even better, if you buy products that are not packed at all. These are best for the environment. Fifth, less energy. Even while cooking, we can do good for nature by using less energy. This means that we don't always have to turn the stove to the highest setting or preheat the oven. Also, we can try to cook several things at the same time. And the sixth principle, less food. Worldwide, we are currently 7.8 billion people and 820 million of them have too little food to survive. This happens because the distribution of food in our world is unfair. While we can consume as much as we want, others have to suffer for it. But we can fight against this by simply eating less. According to the WHO, if we ate 2200 to 2500 calories per day, no one would go hungry ever. Wouldn't that be wonderful 
a world in which no child has to cry because it has too little to eat. So those will be the six principles of sustainable cooking. But now, let's get back to the topic of this video. And I want to be completely honest with you. I am not an expert when it comes to sustainable cooking. I don't know if it is better for the environment to eat a potato or a portion of rice. But I'm ready to take on the adventure of finding out more about sustainable cooking. If you want to join me on this adventure, you are more than welcome. And if not, then not. I mean you are old enough to decide by yourself. So in my videos I will show you recipes and tricks on how to cook more sustainably. If you think more people should see this video, then give it a thumbs up. I'll see you next week. Bye!